Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this video, we'll be looking at the new features inside of the Photoshop Elements Organizer. If you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, then look at my complete training and you'll find links for that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. There are several new features here inside of the Photoshop Elements Organizer. Some of them are pretty interesting, some kind of so, so it depends on, on what your needs are. First off, I can't really show you this one, but it's that the Organizer is now touch sensitive. So if you're working with a touch screen, like on a tablet, you can now move things around, do work in here, including some of the basic editing stuff down here at the Instant Fix. You can do this stuff with a touch screen. Very, very useful, again, if you're using one of those touchscreen devices. I'm working on a desktop here, so I can't really demonstrate that little tool, but just keep it in mind you can use some touchscreen stuff now. A lot of fun. Up here on Share, they've made a little change here on the Facebook and on the YouTube options for sharing. It's simply a change in the interface. Let's just show you just one quick demonstration. I'll just grab this picture right there, and we'll click on Share and go to Facebook and I'll let this open up the new interface. And here we go. The new interface for sharing. So same basic layout for Facebook and also for YouTube. On Facebook it's kind of nice. You can easily choose to share a timeline or add to an album or even create an album for this right there. I can adjust the public friends or only me setting up here. I have my settings right down here and then click on share once everything is set the way you want it to it will then post it right up onto your Facebook account, or if I was in YouTube, onto YouTube. Okay, we'll cancel that. So a little new interface, kind of nice, not a real big deal, but it might be important for you. One of the things that you can do here in the organizer is that you can watch folders right down there under the file menu. And I can choose which folders I want to watch. Right now I'm looking at the pictures folder, my Google Drive folder, and my OneDrive folder. Now this previously has only worked in the Windows version of the organizer. So if you're using a Mac, you can now do this on the Mac as well. So for your Mac users out there, this is a very, very good new additional feature. If I come down here, go back to the watch folders again. You see here I have a Google Drive and OneDrive. Those are two of my cloud-based storage locations. So I can actually import right from those. And you'll see that if you go up to File and get photos, videos, and in bulk right there. Or if you go up here to import in bulk, either one, and you'll see right down here, there are your cloud-based services. Again, I just have the Google Drive and OneDrive installed on my system right now, but it automatically will look for those and show me any images inside of those drives. It will then also update those. So it will go online, take a look at what's online, and then bring that into my import media dialog box. It's a little slow here getting the pictures, but it's getting there. There we go, it's finding a few of those. So another very, very nice feature if you're using these online services. It also will do Dropbox. I just don't have Dropbox installed on my system right now. So there you go. It does those two additional things. Again, kind of creates a better connection between your cloud storage and your computer. So a nice little feature in there. Down here is a thing called Instant Fix. Now this is really useful if you're in a hurry and you want to fix some things. You don't want to spend any time on them. You don't want to go over to the editor and do any work in the editor. You can now do some fixes directly here inside of the organizer. I'm going to grab this one right here. It's kind of a dark picture. I'll grab that. Let's go up here a bit further. I have another dark one up here someplace. That's pretty dark. Click on that one as well. So I now have two pictures selected. They're both dark. I'll click on Instant Fix. Now keep in mind that this also is touch sensitive. So you can do this with touch as well. So here you go. Two pictures that are dark. Now you can do multiple pictures in here if you want to. You can also do just one picture at a time. If you do multiples, keep in mind that everything you do here is going to apply to all of your pictures that you currently have open in the Instant Fix. So only do 
multiple pictures if they have the same problem. In this case, it's a lightness problem. Go right here to light. You have these different lightness adjustments. You can just grab this slider control and move it around and see how it looks. Now, again, notice that this is working on both pictures at once. Somewhere in here looks pretty good for this picture, not as good for that picture. So I really shouldn't be doing these together. But you can easily make your decision on that. But it allows you to do these kind of fast adjustments. You can do different effects in here if you want to. There's an antique effect. Here's a caramel kind of color effects. So different colorations. I'm using the wheel on my mouse right now. You can actually scroll down and look at all these different colorization effects in here. Here's kind of a frame effect, old-fashioned TV frame effect right there. So lots of stuff that you can play with. Again, real fast, easy to do, and you can do multiple pictures this way. You can look for red eye. You can crop in your images. You can try to do a smart fix. I found on, on testing that smart fix really does not do very well. There's the before and there's the after the smart fix and with that frame. Looks kind of weird. I'll just undo that. There we go. You can undo and redo right down here, bottom left-hand corner, or reset to the original. There's the reset. But we have clarity, which is kind of a vibrancy setting in here. Color adjustment, light adjustment, the smart fix that I'm not really happy with, the effects, red eye, and cropping. So you can do all of this stuff. And again, you can do one picture at a time or multiple pictures. The nice thing about this, let me just click on done here. The nice thing about that is you don't have to go over to the editor to do this. If it's just a real fast fix, you can do it right here inside of the organizer. Real useful, for instance, if you're out with your tablet, you're taking pictures out there, you want to do a real quick fix with your tablet right in the organizer, you can go ahead and do that with the instant fix. And again, it's also touch sensitive as well. So nice new little feature right there. Now the next one, there's next two actually are up here under the search. The search has been updated and this is probably the best new feature in the organizer. If you use search a lot, this is a great feature. Now there are problems with it and I'll discuss that as we go through. What it does is it opens up this new search. Notice that all my pictures are kind of shown in the background there. We have different options down here. At the very top we have smart tags. When you bring new pictures into your catalog, into the organizer catalog, they will be looked at and then given tags and tagged in sets automatically. And it can help you save a lot of time. And this is one of those little problem areas as well. Let me just show you a few of these. Here's animal. Sure, cats are animals. That's fine. Nature, that's fine. Forest, close enough. That's a deer. That's right. Wildlife is fine. Pet, that is a pet. That's fine. Cat, that's fine. Kitten, actually there are no kittens in that shot, so that's not exactly right. Garden, not bad, but it will make mistakes. Here's a good one. There's my cat listed as a dog. I actually found eight of my cats as dogs. Obviously cats. Oh, there's Actually, this isn't a dog. This is a Arctic fox. Like a dog, I suppose. Close. So cats, cats, cats. That's a deer. There's no dogs in there, so it kind of messed up on that one. Horse, that's a deer. Farm, it's not a farm. So it, again, hit and miss sometimes. There's a picture of my cat. It called it a bird, so it's not a cat. This is a picture of a Japanese garden. It's not a beach, but it thinks it's a beach. Zoo, maybe yes, maybe no. Plant boat, that fits. Fountain, there's no water there. It isn't a fountain, but that's okay. Stag, good enough lake, pond, close enough. They're all right. That's actually a rock and not sand, so I got that one wrong. There's my cat again, tagged as a penguin. Kind of weird. Polar bear, good. That's a deer, not a rabbit. That's the same deer, not a squirrel. So I got those wrong. So again, you can see it's kind of hit and miss. Here is my wife feeding the Arctic fox. Definitely not a goat. That's not agriculture. That's penguins. And it didn't tag them as penguins, it tagged them as agriculture. I have one picture of a fish down here. It's not coral, it's not a dolphin, it's not a shark. So it got three of those wrong. But you can change those tags if you want to, but it will speed up you know, a lot of the work when you import it because most of these are accurate. So just keep in mind it's not perfect. 
Okay, so smart tags, new feature, useful, kind of. Okay, on the people, it didn't find any people. I don't know why. I have lots of shots of people in there. didn't find any of them. So I, I found this to be the problem with the facial recognition and people. If the person's face is looking right at the camera, it's going to find it, no problem. If they're looking off to the side or anyplace else, it's not going to find the people. So let's keep that in mind. It really is people who are looking right at the camera is what this one's all about. On places, you have to go in and tag your images for them to show up here on places. On dates, it does. It goes through and it finds the dates of the picture were taken. That's taken right out of the information, the metadata for the files. So that's easy to do. Folders that they were brought in from, that's fine. Keywords, I put in these two keywords as tags. I did that already, so it did do that for me. These are albums. I set up two albums as examples in here and it went and found those. That's fine. Okay, so it finds all this stuff. What makes this new search really useful is you can easily go through here and do multiple things as you go down. Let's click on animals. So there's all the animals over in here. I can then come down here and come down to let's say 2016 and I want just the animals from September right there from 2016. And we'll scroll down and see what else we have down here if there's anything. And I want the ones that have keywords cats on them. What it does here is it takes all of these searches on the left hand side as you're going through these searches and is choosing from the images in the search. Notice that number in there. That's how many images it found that matched that particular search. That's what we're doing in here. So I found 11 pictures from San Diego. I actually tagged those with San Diego. Up here it found 63 pictures that were smart tagged with animal. You can then add these on and kind of define your search by adding in these additional options over here. So that's what makes this really, really useful is you can kind of narrow down exactly what you want to do by choosing different sets over here on the left hand side. If I want to get rid of these September parts, click on that X and it removes that September. So this is animal and cats. So that it's inside the animal option or animal smart tag and also inside of my cats folder. So there's all the animals in my cats folder right there. So a real nice, very useful search. I actually like this search tool quite a bit. Now the problem is with this is of course the smart tags aren't always accurate. As we saw down here, when I just go down a little bit, when I call my cat a penguin for instance, this is all cats including penguins. So it's not always accurate on these smart tags in here. It's not very good with, the, with finding people. That's a problem. With the places, you have to do this manually ahead of time. It does this automatically, it does folders automatically. Keywords, you have to manually do the keywords to make this useful. Same thing for albums, you have to manually set up your albums. So that's, that's really the problem in here is that a lot of this takes some manual work ahead of time. Down here on ratings, I put a few of these things as, as four star ratings. There are those two are set at four star ratings. So I've added on that rating equals four. So they're in animals, they're cats, and they have a rating of four. Just kind of adding that in. But again, I had to go in and rate those first. Let's go back now. So that's the new search. I like the new search a lot. Let's go back to our basic catalog. There we go. I like it a lot. It just has some minor problems. The new feature I like the most here inside of the new 2018 organizer. Now there's one more thing which isn't listed as a new feature, it's really kind of an updated feature, and that's their slideshow. Let's do a real fast slideshow here. I'll take this picture, and that one, that one there, and I'll take that one down there, and let's grab one more. There we go. Go up here to Create, come down to Slideshow. Now, in the previous versions of Photoshop Elements, beginning with 11, 11 through 15, you had a slideshow and it gave you just one slideshow. That was it. All you could do was just run the slideshow, period. You had no options, no choices. Now, it comes in with some interesting special effects. And now it's automatically doing all this stuff. I haven't done anything. I haven't made any choices or options in here. It just is just doing this automatically. Now, it gives you a slideshow, but that's my biggest complaint, is that it doesn't give you any options. Okay, that's what it used to do on the previous versions from 11 and up. Now, 
with this new enhanced version, we can go over here and you can actually do a little bit more. And that's where this has been improved in version 2018. Here's the media. And I can do such things as add captions in here. Just type in a caption. I can add a text slide in between these. I can add in more photos and videos. So I have a bit more options in here. It's not a lot still, but it's a few more options. I, I like this ability to add in captions. I like the ability to add in a text slide. But these are all linked to the basic theme. Your themes are right here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six themes. Now the themes include the animations and they include the transitions. All that stuff is included in the themes. Now if you don't want to be creative and all you want is a quick slideshow with some real fancy effects, this is a great way to do it. And this can save you a lot of time and make a very professional looking slideshow. Since we now have six themes here instead of just the one in the earlier versions of Elements. This is a great update. You can also bring in audio over here. You have all these different audio options to bring in and go ahead and play behind your slideshow. So much better than previous versions back to version 11. And the reason why I'm making a point of that is that in version Photoshop Elements 10, there was a great slideshow program. They took that out in version 11 and gave us bad slideshows ever since. This is a step in the right direction, but it's still nothing compared to what you could do before. Nowadays, if you want to do a good slideshow with full creativity, you need to use the Premiere Elements program, the video editing program, and do your slideshow over there where you have total freedom. That's what I would do nowadays. So there you go. That's a look at the new features here inside of the Photoshop Elements Organizer 2018. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.